what, but next we're going to meet a 24-year-old Stanford University graduate. He just spent six months undercover as a high school student, and until now, no one knew about this, including the teachers or the students. This is a fascinating story. you got to stick around for this. Oh, geez. Love the story. They know now. They know now. It's coming uh, up. Know it's know up, now. buddy. They will know now. That's yeah. right. Oh, my goodness. All right, welcome back. This is the guy we're talking about, Jeremy Iverson. He's a 24-year-old uh, Stanford University graduate. He spent six months undercover at a high school in the L.A. area. We're not going to say which one it is. Nobody knows about this, including the teachers or the students until now. This is the first time he's telling a story of what it was uh, like there. So I want to welcome you. Now, you're only, what, six years? Six so years out. I'm six years but out of high, high school. High school. But the world, we should say, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. You're from New York. Uh, you went to Exeter, which is a very fancy fruit fruit school. So you didn't have the normal high school experience. Exactly. Now. Okay. And that's a big part of the reason why I wanted to do this project. Because basically this was a chance to have sort of the Southern California Say by the Bell high school experience I never really got to have myself. Yeah. A lot of yeah, people but you know what, a lot to do of that, <laughs> I think. Yeah, but and a lot of people who went to boarding schools and stuff didn't have, they didn't have that experience, the typical high yeah. school experience. But here it is, you said you wanted to go to high school. So you've got to walk us through this. So you, you wake up one morning thinking, great, I'm going to find some way, who, some way I can infiltrate a high school and get in. Most but, but people it, spend a lifetime trying to get out of school. They can't wait to get out of high school. And here you are, you went back. How did you even get in? Well, it was really hard, actually. 30 schools rejected me. Um, there were liability concerns, all sorts of stuff like that. The 31st school trusted me, and I went ahead and uh, I enrolled as a transfer senior. And But you're making it seem like it was so simple. You had to get this approval. Finally, you found a superintendent who would say, Agreed. great, we're going to let you do this. Right. And then you had to get fake transcripts. I mean, tell us all this. Absolutely. This is fascinating. Well, it was, it was kind of tricky. Um, <laughs> we, kind of. We, we actually we had to try and figure out. I had to be the average student. So I had to be sort of a C plus, B minus kind of kid. So when I put together all those transcripts and everything, I had to make sure that I was going to be able to keep up a C, min a C plus, B minus GPA. Did you cut it? GPA. Well, you went to Stanford. That must have been yeah, tough. That doesn't mean anything now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. With the great exactly. inflation and all that. Right. The tricky thing about it all was that it would be easy to get an A and it would be easy to get an F. But it was really tricky to be Average wise, how did you fit in? Did they see you as being 17 or 18? Um, most people did. You um, can pass for it. Because what do you expect? You know, if you're looking around your classroom yeah. and you see there's another kid next to you, you're not going to really question yeah. Exactly. So, wait a second. What's okay, this photo yeah. that we're looking at? Because there's a girl. You can't have a girlfriend. Okay. You weren't allowed to have The trick like... about this one was it was my secret undercover high school girlfriend. She was actually a friend of my cousin's who was a real high school senior. She knew about the project. Mm -hmm. And since I needed to have some sort of Who's girlfriend in this story, I brought this girl and I imported her. I, I, I went to prom with her. I had an entire back like history with her, you know, like a fake story. I had her picture in my wallet all the time, and I went through fake drama with her. You know, I tell my friends, I don't think it's working out with Heather. You know, like she's, I don't know, it's weird. Like she wants to see other people and stuff. Uh, you and, you uh, know, I, I, we should also mention you made a couple of ground rules for yourself. Sure. One of the ground rules was no physical contact, no Absolutely. intimacy with the students. Exactly. What, was it? What, what else? And the other one was you couldn't start any illegal con like conduct of any type. Drinking right. or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. What, did, exactly. what, did you, what did you find? Um, in terms of, like, what are the kids like nowadays? Right. Yeah. It was really interesting. There was, first of all, there was actually a lot of drinking, drugs, that sort of thing going on. A couple of the most interesting points, though, were the kids were very, very, very overwhelmingly politically conservative. I mean, these are kids who grew up uh, under, uh, after September 11th. They weren't no, necessarily they didn't conservative. Nobody knew. No, no, but Nobody. they weren't conservative. Oh, oh, no, not yeah. at all. In they fact, would the clash. Teachers, exactly. And this is probably the first time in, in American history that you've actually had liberal teachers debating their conservative students. Oh, my God. Right. Where, the, where the liberal students would be trying, uh, the, the, the liberal teachers would be trying to get the students to try consider, you know, different angles, and the kids would be hard line, and they would have. So, so, what, I mean, what, were, what were you like, though? Were you a cool kid? Were you? I actually was. You were cool I was. Kid. There was first two days I was in horrible, horrible sort of limbo. I didn't have anyone to sit with. you were with. Narc. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. Because right before I got there, there was this huge party that happened, the Sadie Hawkins dance. Mm -hmm. And 50 kids were really drunk, were brawling, were fights. Police had to come take them away. Parents had to come take them away. It was a disaster. And this rumor went around that the school district was going to send in a narc. And so and three sure. days later, I'm like, hi, I'm the oh, new God. kid. Right. Yeah. So there was about two to three weeks of narctum where, where people were, were trying to figure out if, if I was or if I wasn't, that kind of thing. And I had to do some major acting and try and kind of you manage all that. You also found something that, that was kind of extraordinary to you, and that was these kids, for instance, loved 
to uh, uh, join the Christian club. Absolutely. They'll join the Christian club, and yet, at the same time... They would be drunk, they would be stoned, and they would be having sex with <gasps> half the other people in the room. But they're in the Christian club. Exactly, and they talk about moral values, and they get into big arguments about well, this. Let me ask you this, cause did it seem like, from the time you were in high school, does it seem that more kids are having sex and more kids are drinking than Absolutely. when you were there? Well, first of all, when I was there, I was at, I was at a boarding school, yeah. so, so yeah. it's like we were just repressed all the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the point is, at this, at this school, like, it was so casual. The sexual revolution is so complete that people aren't even, aren't even, like, it doesn't even seem to be something. Girls would just tick off, like, on their fingers, like, how many guys they'd slept what? with. They'd just point them out. One girl's like, I slept with that guy and that guy and that guy. Mm -hmm. And my best friend here slept with that guy and that guy and that guy. And, yeah, like, five of them are the same, but, like, we're still best friends. Mm -hmm. And they'd be a little hard. You all, would be branded it's all a slut. hooking up, right? It's all hooking Exactly. Up. It's yeah. all hooking up. And there's yeah. different levels of it, actually. Now, they have degrees. There's, there's, um, there's talking to is mm -hmm. one degree. And then the Instead next Instead of going levels. with? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's, going with is sort of like the umbrella term. Oh, you know? <laughs> and now, it, now it's, like, it's, it's precise. And people could be like texting, you know, like on the phones. I mean, that's a pretty, pretty early Were you early shocked? Stage. I mean, look, you went to Stanford, so obviously you didn't go to an uptight university. It's a very right. liberal university. Were you shocked by the behavior you saw? Um, well, I was mainly shocked by was that it sort of coexisted that at one point they'd be so moralistic and moralizing about so many things. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, again, like the drug use, the, the sleeping with each other. In fact, in terms of the drug use, so many kids were on steroids. What? Really? I would say this like was even, not even totally, athletes? totally unpredicted. Athletes, anybody, for appearance enhancement, for performance enhancement, for anything. Are you kidding this me? This is all very you upsetting. You wouldn't even yeah. know that in high school. Yeah. I would say about 30% of the cool guys were on steroids. Really? Yeah, what, was there anything that you, uh, having gone through this experience, were you able to maybe change some of the kids' point of view on things and, and maybe help them not make the same mistakes you did without being like, they're going to be like, why are you saying this to me? You know? I tried you really able? subtly. I actually had one of my best friends there was actually 15 years old. You know, you oh talk about that. You know, it was amazing because we were really good friends. So what, are they, gonna, what are they going to think? Now. Now. What is now. your best friend going to think now that you're going public? With, are they going to feel ripped off in their friendship with you? Well, the thing about this is that my biographical information was obviously false, right? I mean, the background data wasn't true. But I was always emotionally honest with them. If I was friends with somebody, I was genuinely friends with them. And I made some good friends there, some really good friends there. Some people told me I was one of their best friends. But now will you keep in touch with them? Um, now, after this has all come out in yeah. public, um, we're going to see how everything goes. This I is had the first time anyone's seeing this. Yeah, you don't know. Who? Look, this is your fake family. This is Tell my us. fake family. Actually, that's my real mother, who okay. I imported from, from New York City. So this is a real mother and what, fake real father? and fake father. Okay. Uh, right. He's an actor from Los he Angeles. He is an actor. <laughs> I think I've seen that guy. <laughs> you probably seen you that guy. you central casting? <laughs> he's I, that friend I, of the family. question that, 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 that came to mind is, this is, you're not going to say wh what the school is, it's in the... Los An General Los Angeles metropolitan a a area. It's not a, it is not a, an urban school by any means. Right. Um, do you think because this is Southern California? I mean, people are watching and saying, well, I live in the Midwest. It's not like that here. You think it's different here because the culture is different here? What's amazing about this place is there's such a, a melting pot of different cultures. I mean, at the school, we really saw so many different types of students from different backgrounds, um, economically, ethnically, everything. And... Overall, though, there were certain trends that kind of stood out. Like, what? Um, like for example, the, the uh, very conservative attitudes toward a lot of things, at least. And as groups as tended to stick with each other. Absolutely. Well, that's sort of a, a given in the high school situation. But even so, despite that, there were some similarities across the board. And in mm -hmm. fact, my, my fake high school girlfriend went to a school that was very different. And uh, she, she, she shared a lot of like, what her students' behavior were like in her yeah. class. And a lot of the stuff was hits on some of the same points. But, I mean, tell us about your daily stuff. I mean, how, what about people who your best friend, for instance, is 15, you never let him come to your house? Yeah. Right. You know? In fact, one of my best friends actually wanted to come over to my house oh, once. Gosh. He called me off and he said, bro, he's like, my mom's driving me crazy. I got to come over, like, now. So is that the closest <laughs> call like, sort of thing? That was, that, that was the closest call, I'd say. What would you Absolutely. say to him? I was like, oh, yeah, hang on one sec, bro. Like, give me 15, 15. I hung up I was like, oh, my God, what can I do? Oh there was a family who lived in the area who served as sort of my, my address, you know, when I needed one for official papers. That's where things got mailed to, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and I called them up. I said, like, please, 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 like, this guy needs to come over to my house. Like, can he come over to the house? Like, it's just like we can go to the living room and just pretend I have a house because yeah. I lived in an apartment in another city. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, this what is what your own, real friends a... think? The <laughs> people that are your age, are they like, are you out of your mind, Jeremy? But the amazing thing, everyone's like, oh my God, I wish I were you. I know, I would <laughs> love to do it. I would love to do that. What I'm getting from you, and tell me if I'm wrong, 
You're an ambitious guy. You're going to write a book. Maybe there's a movie or a TV show. Sure, deal. we're actually talking about. And you also, right I, I think, looking, at you want to be on camera yourself. Right? So, That'd be a lot of so, fun. So his friends are saying, "Yeah, that's terrible. That's what yeah, he would do." Yeah, yeah. Right. He's going yeah. after it. He's going after it his own way. All right. Uh, in summation, because we have to wrap now. Um, okay. Are, are you glad you did it? Are, will you feel badly for the the kids who will say, "Wait a minute, that that's my buddy over there." I hope they'll understand that I came at this um, because it was something I really, really wanted to do. That I came at though in a very honest way, and I came at it in a very truthful way as far as I could, given the constraints of everything. And that if I was friends with them, I was really friends with them, and I mm -hmm. still consider myself to be friends with them. Well, we're going to do your movie, except Jonathan Silverman's going to play you. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh... Maybe Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> yeah, we'll work it out. Kirby is uh, also the author of a book called Twenty One. That is uh, your fiction yeah. book that's coming. Absolutely, out. it's actually yeah. it's coming out in March, right. but you can pre-order it online right now. Okay. It's about a fraternity guy's 21st birthday. He has to do 21 drinks. 21 drinks, each Absolutely. one a chapter. Uh, exactly. His new book about high school undercover won't be out until next year. See, this is the first time you've ever talked about it. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you for coming. It's like thank you for having me here. Okay. Like the movie Never Been Kissed. Hi. <laughs> there you go. It is. All right, Drew next, Barrymore, right? Drew Barrymore. Style file.